We're halfway through 2023 and for some of you, you still have losers in your portfolio and actually I have some too. So today we're going to talk about why we have losers in our portfolio and how to determine like what is the next step and not to be necessarily trigger happy, but not holding on to losers forever. Dividend Growth Investors, bonjour. My name is Mike Hiru, and I am the founder of Dividend Stocks Rock and I'm also a passionate investor. I have this YouTube channel to help you invest with more conviction so you can enjoy your retirement. Speaking of conviction, when you have red lines in your statements, well, you don't feel that good, right, about your portfolio. Uh, and, and a lot of investors struggle to let them go. And here's how I approach each of my losers to know exactly what to do with it and if I should keep them, if I should buy more or if I should get just get rid of it. So the first things first is to know why I have a loser in my portfolio. And there are like basically three reasons to know if you have a loser, like why you have a loser or not. The first one is it's the market fault. So as you can see here, during the pandemic crash of March of 2020, if you look at all the sectors, if you look at the market in general, everything was down. There was no place to hide. And when you have your portfolio like this, you see the portfolio, you have like all your stocks or your ETF, they're all down. Well, if you look at the stock market and it's during a market crash, it's like the most obvious thing to do. Just be patient. There's nothing to do at this point. The market is just going crazy. And if you start doing trades there, you will likely hurt your portfolio more than anything else. Why? Because there's absolutely no rationality right now and you just don't want to take action in the middle of a panic attack, right? The second layer is when you have stocks that are losers, but you know, you don't necessarily see that the market is going that bad. A good example would be 2022, last year. Uh, last year, the market was down roughly 10%, but it wasn't the end of the world. And then we're talking about more the US market, because if you look on the Canadian side, it was pretty okay. It was like almost flat. And the thing is, you just have to look at the sectors. As you can see on this graph, you see that in 22, the only place that you could hide was the energy sector. However, utilities, consumer staples, healthcare stocks, even some industrials, they did okay. So some people just did well in 22 because they were invested in those sectors. So it's another thing also, because if you have like a lot of technology stocks, consumer discretionary and communication companies, Unfortunately, you lost a lot more than others. Does it mean that your stocks are bad? Well, not necessarily, because actually the other way around could turn, like the wheel could turn very fast. As you can see on this graph, kind of funny, but the technology sector, communication, and consumer discretionary are the big winners of 23. Funny enough, I was discussing with a member at Dividend Stocks Rock and I was telling her, well, my portfolio did not do incredible in 22. I beat the market, but like by a very small margin, I pretty much did what the market did. But in 23, it's a whole different ball game and my portfolio is up big time. And then she was telling me, well, Mike, I have the opposite right now. My portfolio is not doing that well. Well, the thing is, she was heavily invested in financial sector and utilities and also in energy stocks. As you can see, those are the three sectors that are not doing well since the beginning of the year, as opposed to technology, communication sector and consumer discretionary that are huge winners. So long story short here, if you have a loser in your portfolio and the market is not necessarily doing bad, take a look at the sector. And here's a great way to improve your portfolio is whenever you see that a sector is going down, well, then you can look at what are the best companies in that sector. Because while all the stocks in that sector will go down, and, and right now a good example would be REITs, especially on the Canadian side, REITs are getting trashed by everybody. Like investors are dropping the balls on all of them because of high interest rate and because they think they're gonna all going to go bankrupt or cut their distribution or whatever. 
But if you select the high quality REITs right now, then you could have, and you're a patient investor, you can handle the volatility, then you may found an amazing opportunity. Same with Canadian banks. I've discussed that in a previous video, uh, link description below for my uh, quarterly update on banks. They are not doing that bad, but the stock price are not going anywhere. That could be your entry to add some of them. So to wrap this up, if the market goes down, you don't have to do much. If you have stocks that are down, but they're in a sector where it's not doing well, again, not too much to do there. However, if you go down to the third layer and then you look at the specific stock and the stock is not doing great while the sector is doing okay or the market is doing okay, then you have a big problem. My favorite example here, IBM. If you look at all the tech stocks in 2020 and 2021, they were all up double digit. It was just crazy. Everybody wanted to have technology stocks in their portfolio. All technology stocks, I mean, everything but IBM. That was pretty much it. So then when you're thinking, says, okay, so IBM is down during that period while all the others are up. And then you have like some great success stories up like 50% in a very small amount of time. So you have to ask yourself what's going on with Microsoft or Apple that is not happening with IBM. And the solution, the, the answer to that question is often found in metrics and the fundamentals. If you look at IBM back then, well, revenue were going down, earnings were going down, and then dividend were like almost not going up, like it's very, very small, especially in 2020 and 2021. So you may think, well, it's not a thriving business, it is actually a struggling business. And while it offers one of the highest yield in that sector, I don't think you should fall for IBM for that reason. Fast forward to today, the graph is not looking any better. Revenue, still not growing. Earnings per share, still not growing. And the dividend sees is still very, very small increases every single year. So. Is IBM going to cut its dividend tomorrow morning? Not necessarily, but definitely is this a company in a growing, thriving sector? Is this the type of business you want? Well, then you have a good reason. You have the good explanation why you have this loser in your portfolio because IBM is not going anywhere because the fundamentals, the metrics are not great. And then when you look at all the others, while well, they're all thriving, maybe it's time to revisit IBM a second time and maybe ask yourself what's its place in your portfolio. So the most important thing when you have losers in your portfolio is not to be trigger happy. It's not because you're losing 10 or 20% or 30% that boom, you have to get rid of it. Maybe it's a bad timing, but you need to find the explanation. So you look at the market, you look at sectors, and then you look at the stock. And if you see a graph like this one for IBM, then you have to ask yourself, how this company is managing its stuff, is finding growth vectors, is, in a, is it able to turn the tide around and then go back into growth mode or not? And don't go into the hoping strategy, hoping that IBM will do better, but rather look at signs if it's going up or it's going down. I would like you now to tell me what are your tricks to determine if you sell your losers or not, or if you just struggle with some of them. Like if you have like stocks that are losing right now in your portfolio and you don't know what to do, the comments are there. I want to know a little bit more about you. And if you want to get rid of that paralysis by analysis, I suggest that you download my DSR recession proof workbook. Complete workbook, more than 70 pages that will help you build a solid and clear investment strategy and make sure that you take actions, you take decisions, and you do not keep those, old, those losers forever. So let me know in the comments again, which stocks you're struggling with, or what are your tricks about selling your losers. And do not forget to download the DSR workbook. And until the next video, don't forget to stay invested.